Hello everyone, this is Mr. Darius again, your business teacher and business consultant, and today we're gonna focus on a new business bill that has to do with the enigma of which is the optimal location for our business to operate. When it comes to location, I strongly advise you not to jump directly on marketing and think of one of the P's that has to uh, do with place. When it comes to optimal location, uh, it does intertwine somehow with the concept that we, we, we learn about in marketing, but this time optimal location is, is, is a totally different concept and it can be seen as uh, the best uh, location in which you can be with your business for the future of your business. So if you wanna have a bright future, if you wanna have uh, a business that is uh, thriving, that is actually succeeding, that is actually gonna do very well in the future, it will depend very, very much with the optimal location you find for it to um, operate. And it's not an easy decision. Uh, I've seen many, many managers crack under the pressure of deciding which is the optimal location. But dealing with this myself, I'm trying to bring up the, the best uh, advices I can give or uh, the, the most important factors you can look at in order to decide which is the optimal location you want to relocate your business, you want to start your business, or actually develop your business. So I'm going to start this video by explaining a bit the relationship between optimal location and quantitative factors, okay? Now, as a manager, you have to love numbers, okay? Making decisions without looking at numbers is a huge mistake. Making decisions by merely looking at numbers is a fatal mistake, okay? So, first of all, we're going to understand how do we uh, take uh, information from numbers and how can numbers help us decide on which is the optimal location. In our, in our next video, we will focus on the qualitative factors which we cannot measure but actually will have a significant weight when deciding the optimal location for our business. So as I said, optimal location is the best place you can be with your business for the future of your business. And when it comes to the quantitative factors that actually influence the optimal location, I want you to think of measurable data. I want you to think of numerical data and I want you to think in terms of sales, in terms of revenue and costs. Okay, so these are the most important three categories when it comes to quantitative factors that we have to take in consideration when we actually decide to uh, make a move. So the number one category of quantitative factors that is tightly linked to uh, these concepts would be um, premises costs. And I want you here to think about labor. I want you here to think about a building. I want you to think about land and I want you to think about the machinery. Okay, now these are very significant categories of costs that can actually determine or actually generate a competitive advantage that can help us build added value, that can help us increase our contribution margin. So it's very important taking consideration the premises cost, okay? Is it cheap labor over there? Is the minimum wage low? Is there a lot of, uh, of people that are actually, actually willing to work for um, you know smaller wages? Do we, do we have a price of buildings over there that is more affordable uh, in comparison with the country where we are right now? Uh, how, how, which are the prices for land, for example? Is the government gonna give us the land or do we lease it? Do we buy it? Is it really affordable? Uh, and last but not least, can we take machinery there? Can we access you know, suppliers that can provide machinery over there? Do we have people that can operate machinery over there? So premises costs are um, extremely important and I put them as number one uh, type of quantitative factor uh, that can actually help you decide when it comes to the optimal location for your business. 
Number two would be transport costs. Okay, so if you want to take your business to the next level, you got to benefit from economies of scale, which means you have to produce and buy in high quantities. And that means you have to transport from Germany to China some of the cargo or some of the uh, fine products and, you know, ship them all over the world. And you have to figure out if the infrastructure if the, the length of the distance, if the challenges on the road, if the pressure of transport will or will not translate into higher costs of production. Okay? Because if this is the case, then surprise, surprise, your profit margin will be lower. And you don't want that. Okay, you don't want to relocate your business in a place that will actually significantly increase your costs of production due to transportation or transport costs and will significantly decrease your net profit margin, uh, especially since, you know, your net profit margin might be at the limit of, of uh, sustainability. Um, <clears throat> number three would be sales revenue. Okay, this has to do a lot with the accessibility and with the convenience and with the ease with which your clients get in possession of your product. Okay, how easy it is for them to actually purchase your product? How easy it is for them to find your product? How easy for them is to get in the possession of your product? Now, these are crucial answers that actually translate into sales revenue. And of course, if, if you don't really want to rely merely on sales revenue, um, you would also take in consideration over here, how much do I need to sell in general so I can cover some costs and here comes in equation the idea of break-even point. So if you don't want to look at this merely by sales forecasts or merely by sales potential, you can look at it by break-even point. So how much do I need to sell, okay, in order to cover my costs and this means a total results of zero. So no, uh, no surplus over there, but no costs also. So how much do I need to sell in order to cover all my costs? And the lower the break-even point, the easier it will be for you to operate in that location, okay? So let me get back to this. So fail, sales revenue is extremely important, okay? Because you want to have forecasts and you want to make appraisals, okay? especially investment appraisals, okay? So you're really interested into investment appraisals because you wanna see how quickly you can get your investment back uh, as a result of that location, what that location can actually generate. But if you're unable to rely only on this, you should also go and look at the break-even point, how easy it is for you to actually reach that break-even uh, point. And last but not least, it would be the government aid. Now, this is a totally um, different story and it has to do a lot with political stability. Whether you like it or not, when discussing about optimal location, especially when you go, uh, you know, outside the normal location you were, like outside your country, for example, or you go overseas, you go in a different culture, you go in a different system, okay, you might have, a, a, you know, really alluring premises, or you might have low transport costs that will uh, t actually make you want to go there. You might have the same sales potential, and that's great, because if you have the same sales potential and lower premises, uh, costs and lower transport costs, that means higher, you know, profits for you. But then if you don't have political stability and if you don't have government support, 
then you're not in there for the long term and things can you know start and be and get a bit weird and actually your business activity can start to be jeopardized uh, and i'm going to explain something about the government aid any government any healthy government that actually has an agenda should be interested in attracting alluring and supporting companies to come in their country because they fight with unemployment you know by creating jobs okay they contribute to the overall wealth of the area in which they um, run as a business they pay corporate taxes they pay direct taxes they pay uh, uh, even indirect taxes and uh, they can have CSR policies you know that uh, other groups of stakeholders might benefit from so it might be strongly in your interest as a government to actually allure companies to uh, build uh, manufacture operate in your country and how do you do that you must have a strong agenda of when it comes to subsidies and grants so you need to have a strong policy over here and transparent policies which are the subsidies you can access if you produce over here which are the grants you can access if you move your business over here so um, this being said these are the quantitative factors that I actually guide my uh, opinion on when I look at a location and I try to evaluate it in terms of numerical potential so I focus on sales revenue that can you know come from over there and costs that can be generated and then I split them into certain divisions such as you know revenue potential and break-even point that will actually fit in over here um, uh, into sales and into revenue and then I focus at costs all sort of costs from premises costs to transport costs but mainly I also look at the uh, uh, political stability and the government aid that I can get from that country in order to move my business over there and operate successfully thank you for watching this video